Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to Faithfully Her. I am your girl, Liana Michelle, and as you see, I'm faced out today. <laughs> so, um, yes, I look a little different today. I don't have any makeup on. I don't have a wig on. Um, I'm just faced out today. And the reason why I'm coming to you like this today is because today's topic is about being authentic, um, being true to yourself, being who you truly are. And when I was praying and talking to God about this topic, um, because it means a lot to me, this is a, a straight up dear topic to me. Um, and I was talking to God and asking him, Lord, how um, should I display this message? What should I say in this message? How do you want me to deliver this message to people? The first and only thing the Lord said to me is, you cannot talk about being authentic if you have a mask on. And I said, Lord, I don't wear a mask when I'm doing my show. He said, that's not what I mean. I'm not talking about the COVID mask. But if you're going to talk about peeling the layers off, then you have to peel your layer off and you have to do it barefaced. And I said, are you serious, Jesus? And he said, yes, I am. And I said, okay, I'm obeying the Lord and I'm doing what God is telling me to do. So I am gonna go on this screen for everybody in the world to see me barefaced. And trust and believe this is very hard for me to do. Um, you all know that I do have a condition called discoid lupus um, and my condition discoid lupus affects your skin. So this is me without my makeup. This is everything that lupus has done to my face. And usually I come on here with makeup and a brand new fresh wig um, because I don't want people to see me like this. I, I feel uncomfortable like this. So me sitting here before you today, I am trying not to cry because this is really hard, um, but we're gonna move forward. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just talk about, um, what being authentic means. Okay. So being authentic means showing your true self, your true feelings and, um, showing and expressing yourself genuinely in order to be authentic. You must first know who you are, who you truly are. And, um, I'm sorry, y'all, but this is difficult. Um, being your authentic self is being who you are, regardless of the influence of others. It's an honest, it's an honest representation of you, not caring what others think of you. So, as I stated, this is hard for me to do because I know people are cruel, people are judgmental, people are hateful, and they don't care about the person' feelings. So they say things, they do things, and they're just very mean-spirited people, and they don't care about how it hurts or affects the, the person on the other side of their cruelty. So I'm putting myself out here as a way to show that you can be comfortable in the skin that you're in, you could be true to yourself, and not care about the backlash of other people's thoughts and opinions. And yes, this is difficult. And I'm going to try to get through this without crying. Okay. So um, the first thing in being true to yourself is knowing who you are. So it says, know thyself, um, know who you are and be in touch with yourself in the moment. So right now for me, knowing who I am and being in touch with myself in the moment is being able to sit here and say, yes, y'all, this is hard for me. I'm not going to sugarcoat that this is hard. I'm not going to sugarcoat that right now my, my emotions are unbalanced. Um, I'm acknowledging my feelings and I'm acknowledging that this is taking a lot of strength and courage for me to sit here like this and allow the world to judge me. Um, 
my mother was the type of person where whenever I left the house, I had to be spot on perfect. My tights had to be in line. I couldn't have a, a thread of string hanging. I couldn't have lint or anything on me. Hair had to be like, I had to be perfect when I walked out that door because it was a reflection of her. And her thing was, I don't want people to think that I'm not taking care of you right, or I can't do this, I can't raise you on my own, or I can't give you good things. So everything has to be perfect. Every crease has to be perfect. Every line has to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect. So I grew up with that mentality of, I have to be perfect, right? And that's a, a big weight to carry, especially for a child and to grow up with that weight on your shoulder of having to be perfect all the time. Um, but now as I'm growing older and I'm growing in my, my spiritual journey, I'm realizing that, hey, I don't have to be perfect. I just have to be me. And being me is good enough for God. So who cares if it's not good enough for the world? Um, the second thing is to be kind. You can express yourself and not be hurtful or judgmental. So again, like I said, I know that it's going to be people out there like, no, she didn't go on this YouTube channel and broadcast it for the world looking like that. I know it's going to be some hateful things being thought and said to the people from the people that may be watching this. And I have to be able to accept that. But I'm going to ask that you take a minute and be kind, because what if it was you on the other end of this camera? What if it was you that was struggling with an illness or a, um, a handicap? What if it was your child? What if it was someone who you really love that's close to you? Would you want people to be judgmental and cruel to them? Or would you want people to find some kindness in their heart? And find a way to say something nice and sweet and decent to that person so let's practice a little kindness when we're looking at other people because you never know what a person is really going through um the third thing is to check in with yourself know your thoughts your feelings and try to figure out how you could be better each day so for me checking in with myself is saying okay girl so you're doing this for real right so how are you feeling what do you think, you know, you could do better or you could do different? Like when I was first sitting here and I was trying to read through this and I was like, oh my God, I need to go and get my glasses because I know I need my glasses when I'm sitting here trying to read things. And a lot of times when I'm doing the show and I'm trying to read the words that I wrote or, you know, I'm trying to read the scripture out the Bible, I'm struggling because I can't really focus on the word. The words are blurry because I'm not wearing my glasses because I'm trying to be perfect for you, the people who are watching. But today, again, I'm being myself flat out. I got my glasses on. Um, the fourth thing is to learn the art of surrendering. Pick and choose your battles based on what matters most for you as an individual. Understand that surrendering does not equal failure. So just because um, you decide that, you know what, I'm not going to, this battle is not worth the fight. So I'm not going to fight this. I'm not going to put up a big hoo-ha or, or whatever with this particular thing. Doesn't mean that you're a failure. It just means that this does not do you any justice. So why am I sitting here fighting? Sometimes we fight everything. Anything that somebody says, anything that somebody does, we got a snappy comeback, we got a head roll and all of this for it. And it's not even really worth it. At the end of the day, what does that fight benefit you? Is it going to change the outcome of how you pay your bills? Is it going to put food on your table? Is it going to put clothes on your kids back? Why are you fighting this? Why are you putting up such a ruckus over this particular situation? Everything is not worth the fight. So learn how to pick and choose your battles. Learn what's important and what's not important and fight for the things that's important, okay? Um, fifthly, 
bring your whole self. Whatever you do, bring 100% of yourself. Don't leave bits and pieces of you because others may be uncomfortable. Always stay whole. I think I spoke about this before, um, if not on here, definitely on the Faithfully Her Facebook page about how I have had a tendency to dumb myself down, to um, not celebrate myself or things of that matter because Maybe somebody that's in my circle is not doing as great. Maybe they're struggling in some areas of their life. So I don't want to go in like, oh, guess what just happened? And make them feel like, oh my God, here she go bragging or here she go talking about herself again or whatever. So I will kind of fall to the back. So I don't make other people feel uncomfortable. And what I'm learning is I can celebrate my wins without being arrogant or boastful. I could celebrate the things that God has done for me in my life without making other people feel bad. And if they do feel bad, that's not on me. That's on them. It's not my burden to carry. All I'm doing is saying like, listen, this is what God has blessed me with. This is what God has done for me. And if he does it for me, he could do it for you. So I'm just celebrating Jesus in that moment. I'm not celebrating me, Michelle. I'm celebrating God and the wonderful things that God has done for me. And telling as a way of showing you that if he did it for me, he can do it for you also. Um, all of this is a part of being true to yourself. You know, you never want to walk in and not be at your best. If you're going into a business meeting, you don't want to go in at 50%. You want to go in 100% prepared, ready to show them who you are, what you have, what you can do. So you want to always show up like that in every aspect of your life. When I go to work, if I go to work at 50%, then that means my client is only getting 50%. I want to go to work at 100% so they can always get 100%. If I'm not feeling my best, and then I have to let that be known, like, you know what, I'm not really feeling great today. So today is going to be a light day. We're not going to go in hard. We're not going to introduce any new um, learning activities or anything today. We're going to kind of just do a repeat of what we've already learned because I'm not feeling 100% today. And then on the day that I'm going in and I'm feeling 100%, then I give my 100% and my kiddos respond with 100%. So you always want to give your best, put your best foot forward. Um, and the, the last thing, as far as this list goes, is to trust yourself. You want to trust who you are. You want to know what you want, what you need, trust your judgment, trust your decisions, because they are based on what's good for you. Now, I've had trouble with this. I've had trouble with trusting myself. And a lot of it is because um, I've made some poor decisions based on emotions. I have allowed my emotions to rule me in a lot of areas of my life. And when my emotions rule me, I tend to say things or do things that may not be the best things for me. But in that moment, my emotions have taken over. So I'm just responding. I'm not thinking first. I'm just responding. And what I've had to learn is I have to check my emotions and say, okay, I know that this is what this has made me feel. But right now, I just need to focus on the situation itself, not the my emotional response, but the actual situation. And then I need to make the best decision I can for that situation. Excuse me, I'm so sorry, y'all. But be good for, make the decision that's best for that situation. So um, I had to learn how to trust myself and trust that I can make good decisions. On my bathroom mirror, I have that written up. I can make good decisions. Trust yourself. Because if I don't trust me, who will? If I don't believe in me, who will? And it's important for me in being authentic and true to myself to be able to trust that I can make good decisions and I can make good judgment calls. So being yourself means you're not putting on a character anymore. 
And a lot of times we put on characters and personas so we could be accepted to be a part of the crowd. But to be comfortable in the skin I'm in and the person I am. Being me means I'm not being fake. I'm no longer being fake with myself. And for a long time, I have put on those characters and those personas. I've adapted that role and became that character so I could be a part of the crew. Um, I, I have done things that are nowhere near who I am as an individual. There are things that I'm not proud of and I've done them so I could fit in. So I could say, oh yeah, these are my friends because I'm doing what they're doing. And what I had to realize and learn is that I don't even like these people. And a lot of it is because of the things that they're doing. And I know that these things do not fit with my character. So I had to check myself and say, why are you giving into this to be a part of this crowd that you don't even like? Like, I'm okay being by myself. A lot of people are not, but I've come to understand and realize that I'm okay by being by myself. I'm okay sitting with me, being with me, hanging out with me. I'm okay not being a part of the crowd and so forth. I'm okay with that. But for a long time, I thought that I needed these people as friends. I needed these people in my life. So to have these people in my life, I conformed to them, to what they were doing so I could be accepted by them. And I'm realizing that I don't need their acceptance. The only person's approval and acceptance I need is God, me, myself, and my son. And that's the acceptance that really matters. Nobody else really matters to me because nobody else is going to stand up for me when I need it. And that's been proven time and time again in my life. Um, no one is going to fight for me. That's been proven time and time again in my life. When the chips are down and I'm in need of financial help, physical help, spiritual help, no one is there for me. Um, so why am I jumping through hoops to be friends with people that are not there for me when it really matters and counts? So why am I playing this role? Why am I this being this character for these people? So I have to peel back that layer and say, no more. No more of me being this character. No more of me playing this role. I'm going to be 100% true to who I am. No matter how hard that is, no matter what it looks like, I have to be true to myself. Um, I had to determine and figure out who and what I really am. And when my mother passed away, that's when it really started to manifest for me as to trying to figure out who is Michelle. I'm no longer a daughter. And my son is grown. He doesn't need me as much as he needed me before. So who am I if I'm not her daughter and I'm not his mother? Who am I if I'm not out here trying to be perfect for the people outside who am I who who am I really and truly who did God birth me to be and how do I get back to that person how do I find her and build her up that person that God birthed me to be so on my journey I had to sit with myself. I had to sit with myself in the mirror and I had to realize that the person looking back at me was not 100% authentic. I had to spend, I had spent so many years of my life playing a role, the role of what others expected or wanted me to be, a role of me pretending to fit in just to have love and acceptance. And as I stated, after my mom passed, I realized that I had no clue as to who I was as an individual. So I tried to step into her role and that caused me more stress because I can't be Hazel. I cannot be Hazel Elizabeth Ratcliffe. No matter how hard I was trying to be her, I had to realize that I couldn't be her. I could not feel her shoes. So and talking to my son one day, he told me, he said, mom, you know, I love granny. 
I, I love Granny with all my heart. She was my favorite person on this planet. She was my number one girl. He was like, but I, but Granny was not a perfect person. And you're trying to be her is ridiculous. So what he told me was that this was the time for me to figure me out and to determine what I want for myself in this life. And he was absolutely right. He hit the nail on the head. I had to figure me out. I had to, I went from one row to the next row, to the next row, to the next row. I was just playing all these characters and not understanding who I really, really was. So I had to sit back and figure me out. So um, I went to God to talk to God and ask God, and I had to meditate on it and say, Lord, help me figure out who I am. Wh what am I here for? What should I be doing? How should I be? Like, I don't want to be the, this character anymore. I just want to be me. Whoever and whatever me is, I just want to be that because that's freeing myself. That's shedding off these characters and these personas. And it's freeing myself to, and allowing myself to be free and happy in just who I am. And um, I came across Romans, the 12th chapter, the second verse. And it said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, I know I always say that nobody is perfect, and you're right, I'm right, nobody is perfect but God. And it's not saying perfect as in being perfect, it's saying as in perfect in God's eyesight, perfect for God. Being me like this is perfect in God's eyesight because I'm accepting myself, flaws and all. I'm learning to love myself, flaws and all. And that's what God wants from us. He wants us to be authentic. He wants us to be true because when we're true to ourselves and we're accepting and loving of ourselves as we are, then that's perfection for God. That's telling him, hey, this person is now comfortable with who she is. She's finding her beauty. She's finding her inner strength, her inner beauty, and she's allowing that to shine through. She's allowing that light to come through. And as that light shines, it's going to be a helping and a blessing to other people. And that right there is good and acceptable to God. So I am learning to do that each and every day. I'm learning it more and more. I'm doing it more and more. I'm accepting myself more and more. I'm loving this girl more and more. And the more I love myself and the more I accept myself, the more I peel back those layers of characters and roles and just get rid of those things, the more stronger I feel in who I am. And that makes me acceptable in God's eyesight. And I love that person. I love being acceptable to God. Um, as I thought about his words and questioned my own realness, I thought about the fact that we are a fallen society and we are a broken people in a broken world. We are all so busy trying to put on these airs or personas for others that I wonder how many people in my own circle are authentic and real. You know, we look at social media and we look at, you know, the Instagram models and so forth. And we put all these things in our body and go on these crash diets and we take all these supplements and do this and that so we can have that perfect body or we can have that perfect skin. And, you know, we're not going to be perfect people. So as soon as we can accept ourselves for who we are, barefaced, no makeup, little rolls and arm fat and everything else, once we can accept that within ourselves, then we can find true happiness. And once we find true happiness with ourselves, then everything else will fall in place. Like, yeah, I'm on the keto, well, a partially keto diet now. A lot of it is health reasons though. I have to make sure my heart stays pure 
of plaque and it, it doesn't have my arteries doesn't get clogged again. So there are certain foods I need to eat. I have to exercise and do certain things to keep my, my heart healthy and to keep my stress levels down because stress is a killer and stress activates my lupus. So when I'm stressed out and I'm going through these things, my lupus acts up. And when my lupus acts up, it triggers my blood pressure and my blood pressure that puts pressure on my heart. So yeah, I have to do certain things to stay healthy. It's not to compete with the Instagram model or the people on social media, but it's simply because of health. I need to be healthy. I want to live a long, healthy life so I can see my son get married and I can love on my grandbabies when he gives them to me. I want those things. So I have to do what I need to do for my own health. But it's not to compete. Um, you have people out here in this world, though, that um, are tough oh, I'm a man and I'm tough or I ain't taking no disrespect from nobody. I put everybody in check and this and that. And then you have those people out here who are very timid and they take anything off of everybody. They are the ones who sit back and you just constantly dog them and they take it. You have the people who are just agreeable because they don't like confrontation. So they, oh yeah, I'm, yep, girl, I agree. Uh -huh. And I'm not about to sit here and act like I'm not the, those people. I am those people. So when I say we have people out there, I'm pretty much talking about myself. Um, I am very timid. I have been very passive aggressive and I have allow people to talk to me any kind of way. I've allowed people to say crazy things to me. I have taken a lot of verbal abuse off of people and I have not put up a fight or an argument because I don't like confrontation. So I just sit back and take it and it's like, oh, okay. My feelings are hurt. I'm angry as I don't know what on the inside, but I won't reflect it. I won't say anything about it. I'll take it. I'll come home and I just let it fester. And that is hurting me. It's not hurting the person who said it. It's hurting me. And because I am not present with myself in the moment, as I stated earlier, and I have not acknowledged it in the moment, I'm allowing it to tear me apart. Well, in being authentic and true to myself, I have said no more. I will no longer do that. If you talk to me crazy in that moment, I'm going to let you know that I do not appreciate it. And I will not tolerate it or allow you to disrespect me and talk to me crazy. Now, do I have to be growling and all rude and disrespectful with it? Nope. I could deliver that message with kindness. And then I could remove myself from the situation and not allow you the opportunity to ever do it to me again. That is a part of my new spiritual growth of saying, hey, I'm not going to allow you to do this to me. I'm not going to allow you to say these things to me. I'm not going to allow you to hurt my feelings continuously. So I'm letting you know this. And now I'm going to remove myself from this situation and not give you an opportunity to do it to me again. That's me being true to myself. Um, I know that I am no longer going to accept things that are not good for me. I'm no longer going to pretend to be something that I'm not just to say, these are my friends, or this is my circle, or um, these are my family members. Because even with family members, I'm done with it. Um, I have one particular family member that has every opportunity she gets she has belittled me. She has talked down to me. She has said hateful things to me. And for a very long time, I just took it because that was my family member. And I love her. I love her. I'm not going to say loved because I do love her. I love her still. Um, love her to pieces and would do anything possible for her. 
But what I had to realize is I no longer have to take your crap. I no longer have to deal with it. I am not a child and you will not talk to me as if I am one. And if you don't respect me, that's fine. We don't have to deal with each other. And I have just removed myself from her situation. I no longer call. I no longer reach out. I no longer try. I no longer put my heart on the line. I no longer do all any of those things because I know that they're falling on deaf ears. And I know that everything that I've tried has been unwanted by her. Um, and I know this because she verbally told me it's unwanted. Um, she verbally told me, I don't love you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Just leave me alone. And I had to finally accept that and say, okay, if that's what it is, I have to leave her alone. It hurt, but being true to myself, I had to walk away from it. And I had to say, you know what? No more of this. I'm not going to do this to myself anymore. I'm not going to keep trying to force something that's not happening. I'm not going to put on this character and this role to be a part of her world and it got me nowhere. And that's exactly what I did. I put on a character, I, I put on this role and I jumped into a world that I knew nothing about just to be close to her, just to build a relationship with her. And at the end of the day, it, it went nowhere. It, fell, it, it went absolutely nowhere. And all of the effort that I put in, apologizing for things I had no control over, all of that. It, it, it went nowhere because at the end of the day, her words to me was, I don't love you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. You can stop calling. You can stop texting. Leave me alone. So all of my efforts were for nothing. So I had to just take a step back and say, you know what? Fine. I'm done with it. I'm over it. I'm done with it. I let it go. And as hurtful as that was for me, I knew it was the right thing to do. And I prayed on it and I talked to God and I said, Lord, should I try again? And the Lord said, let it go. Just let it go. When the time is right, she'll come to you. But you've done all you can do. So let it go. And that's where I am with it. I have had to let that character go, let that role go and just wash my hands of the whole situation because I realized that it wasn't worth me continuously having my heart broken. Um, and yes, I've gone to God all the time and say, you know, God, I need your help. I need your help to let go of these characters, to peel back the layers. Um, I've played these roles for so long that I've lost who I am, who my true self is. Lord, please help me find the person that you birthed me to be. And God has continuously worked with me and he's continuously helped me find that, that person and rebuild her and get her to a place where she could sit here before you now, barefaced, not in tears, telling you my truth peeling back all of those layers and those characters. Um, another scripture real quick that I want to read before I get out of here is um, 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the 14th verse. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So in me finding myself, I had to realize that, hey, all of these characters and all of these roles and personas that you've been playing for all of your life, the devil has been living in the midst of those layers. And he's been telling you, it's okay to play this role. It's okay to be this character. It's okay because you're going to be able to fit in. You're going to get acceptance. You're going to get love. You're going to get all the things that you think you want. You're going to be able to get these things. And when I started peeling back those characters and those layers and I started seeing where Satan was and I started realizing that this was not healthy, it was not a good decision for me. It was not beneficial for my life. So drop that layer off, let that role go, leave that persona behind because it's not beneficial for me. Um, Matthew 7 and 15 says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. 
Um, so the people who've come to me and say, oh, girl, it's going to be all right. You can do it. Just come on. We'll accept you if you do this. We'll accept you if you become, you will bring you into our friend group if you just don't say anything, if you keep your mouth shut and just roll with the punches. All of those things, it's all BS for a lack of a better word right now. It's all BS and none of it is beneficial to your life. So let those things go. Um, first John, the fourth chapter and the first verse says, beloved, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So everybody who comes to you with open arms and pretending to love you and pretending to care about you and pretending that they ride for you and they're down for you, test it, test it and see, test it. And when the chips are down, is that the person that's going to come forward and stand up for you and say, girl, don't worry about it. I got you. Here's a little something to help you get to the end of the month. Here's a helping hand and a shoulder to cry on. Here's a coat for your child. Here's a pair of boots or whatever. Are those people going to be there for you? No, those people are the ones that snickering and talking about you to their other friends. Girl, you know, she couldn't even make her rent this month. Mm -hmm. I knew she wasn't going to be nothing without Hazel or all of those are the people that, that are just false and fake because they're smiling in your face pretending that they love and care about you because you've put on this character that they wanted you to play. You've been playing this role for them to be accepted, <coughs> excuse me, to be accepted and they don't care about you. <coughs> they care less if you lived or died and they have nothing nice or decent to say about you. So like, I know me sitting here right now with my bare face, telling my truth, putting it all out there so I could be 100% true to myself, no longer faking myself out. I know I'm going to get backlash. I know it's going to be some people talking. It's some people who know who that female family member is. And they like, I can't believe she said that. I can't believe she put that out there. Well, yes, I did, but I didn't say the name. So that's something, right? But they're going to sit there and they're going to have hateful things to say about me, hurtful things to say about me. It's going to be people that's looking at this and looking at my bare face. They're going to say hurtful things, but then they'll call me and say, oh, girl, that was a good little show. But they don't believe that because they're talking about me. They're saying hateful things. They have no kindness in them when it comes to this particular topic. And so my, my encouragement to you today, my motivation for you today, and hopefully someone will hear this and they will be able to peel back the layers. Hopefully somebody will see me like this and say, you know what? I'm going to peel back these layers. I'm going to take this mask off and I'm going to be authentic. I'm going to be true to myself. I'm going to be 100. And whoever does not like me for me, then I don't want you in my life anyway. Because if the only way you like me is with a full face of makeup and a wig on, and I have to smile and greet you and pretend all the time, I don't want you in my life. If you can't love me like this, then I don't want you to love me when I'm made up. If you can't accept me for who I am, I don't want you to accept me, period. I don't want to be a part of your friend group. I don't want to be in your family. I don't want to be a part of you if you cannot accept me for who I am. I am a flawed individual and I'm proud of that. I'm not perfect and I'm proud of that. And I love me for me, flaws, imperfections, all of it. I love me for me. I embrace myself and the people who love me like this, the people who embrace my flaws and my imperfections, those are the people that I want in my life because those are the people that continues to uplift me. My bestie, she uplifts me. My other bestie, he uh, as crazy as he is, 
he uplifts me because he can accept me for who I am. She can accept me for who I am. And those are the people that I like to pour my love and support into because they pour love and support into me. They don't expect things of me that are unrealistic. They don't expect me to be somebody that I'm not. They love me for me. So I'm going to leave you guys on that note. I hope that you got something from this. I hope that, you know, you're able to sit with yourself in the mirror and be true to yourself and be 100% authentic all the time, every day, all day. Don't let anybody take you out of your truth. Nobody, nobody should be able to take you out of your bag, make you act a certain way, make you do something you don't want to do or any of that. Stay true to who you are. Stay true to the person God birthed you to be. And if you don't know who that person is, sit with yourself, talk to God, meditate and pray on it and ask God to please help you find the person that he birthed you to be and help you and give you the strength and the courage to be 100% true to that person because that's the person that matters. Not all this other crap. None of this other crap matters, but being true to yourself matters because that truth is what's going to take you further and further. And it's going to elevate you 100%. You don't have to be rough and tough. You don't have to be the shoot them up, bang, bang person. You don't have to be nasty and disrespectful and, and have a, a nasty disposition. And you don't have to be that person. Ask God who it is he birthed you to be. And ask him to give you the strength and the courage to be that person every single day of your life all day, 100% true and authentic to yourself. So you could be true and authentic in this world. Everybody talks about, oh, I'm real. I'm 100, put facts and all, but are they really real? Are they really true? Are they really 100? Ask God to give you that for yourself. And when you can be that for yourself, you will see so many great things happening you'll find true happiness in you true happiness like I am finding so much true happiness in me and even from the beginning when I started this to now I was so nervous and scared to come on here like this and do this but now as we approach the end I'm okay. Like, I'm not scared anymore. I'm not nervous. These are not tears of fear. These are tears of joy because I did it. And I feel so much stronger. I feel so empowered. I feel so much better because God got me through this. I feel a, a bit of deliverance in this. I feel freedom. This was so freeing for me and I just, I feel wonderful. So I hope that everybody is able to peel back the mask, peel off the layers, let the characters and the roles and the personas go and just be yourself. It's so freeing. You will find so much freedom in it. And that, that freedom is everything. So I'm going to leave you with that quick note. Um, I'll be back next week in some makeup. Trust it. <laughs> I will be back to my old self. Um, but it was important for me to do this message this way because I, I can't, like I said before, God said you can't talk to them about peeling back the mask if you're going in a mask. So it was important for me to do this today with no mask. Um, and again, it, it was freeing for me. So I want to just say thank you, Jesus, for giving me the message to do this in a bare face. Thank you for freeing me. Thank you for releasing me from the characters and the roles and the personas that I've had, that I've worn for so long, Jesus. Thank you for just letting it go and giving me some freedom in this. I've hoped that I hope that I have inspired somebody today. I hope that somebody gets something from this today. I pray your strength in Jesus. I pray that you have a blessed week in Christ. And, you know, I'm faithfully her.
if you please leave a comment, like it, share it, subscribe to it. Um, if you want to email me, it's faithfullyher at gmail.com. Thank you again for tuning in. I love you all. Have a blessed week in Jesus.